the match with, with Murdo with Open Warrior, and you're just a guy that seems very composed and, and doesn't uh, you know, burn bridges or hold a grudge. That being said, I got a lot of emails asking about your opinion of CM Punk. Uh, he didn't have the greatest things to say for you on a podcast a couple of months ago. Uh, what is it with you guys? Or, or are you cool with him? Or yeah. Do you have your feelings hurt? What? No, you know, it's funny. Um, I remember hearing things about him in, um, in the, like when he was first uh, coming in. Or I, I actually think he might have been in OVW at the time. And like I remember hearing people say, "Oh, you know, the big thing is that you hate this CM Punk kid and you buried him." And so I'm like, "I was got and I didn't mean this as a knock to him. I didn't even know who he was. You know, we didn't have time then to watch other stuff and watch other, you know, components in the business. I don't think I'd ever seen him. I knew who he was. And I was like, I don't know how I hate this guy. I've never even seen him. I don't, I don't know when he went out here in WWE. And, and then, and then when he came in here, um, I think somehow that got carried over." Something. I don't know, to be honest. Right. I, I've never had a beef with him. I never have. Um, you know, and then when we when we got further in and, and um, you know, we worked together, whether it was, um, you know, when, when he uh, first did the thing where he walked out, uh, into, you know, the, right, to drop the pipe bomb and the whole thing, and the, um, we did this storyline, and the Nash was brought in, and it was done for the right reasons, right? I think it was done to, to, to get us into him. Um, and get him more over, but we, um, the, the decisions that were made were Vince's and were made to help him. I and mean, then they didn't work out for whatever reason. Nash couldn't hang and, and couldn't be here. And, um, but I really he had the grudge on that. And he's a weird cat. Like, I don't mean that as a knock, but I mean that as a, he's hard to get to know. He's, he doesn't talk. He doesn't communicate well. I would hear from everybody in my role now as, you know, uh, talent relations and all that. I would hear from everybody that, oh my God, he's livid today. He's quitting. He's this. He's that. I'd go to him and say, what's going on? And I'd get, that's fine. You know, and, okay. It's tough. Could he ever come back here? I, you know, listen. One guy to ask on that, but never say never. You know, was it Bruno? He was here. Uh, everybody, Hogan's been here. You know, if if the thing is, with all, if the fans want it, yeah. If, if the WWE universe wants it, if that's what's best for business, and I don't mean to sound that like it's a you know the cliche, but it's it's really what's in the best interest of everybody's here. If we can get past it, it's it's my regret. Just to pump back to me, you shouldn't be here anymore. If this was the best thing, you should be here. You can't do this job if you don't want to. Can't agree. Let's move on. Word association. I'm about some names for you. Uh, just give me a quick opinion. John Michaels, greatest in ring performer ever. That's what I said. Rick Fire, greatest. Uh, Greatest all-around performer, character, and everything, all around. You know? I don't agree with you. I've got to say, I answer on both those. Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash, to me, um, very underrated mind for the business. Yeah, great right. mind for the business. Uh, awesome mind for the business. He just, does sometimes hard to get past his personality or whether he likes it, doesn't like it, and he's very blunt with yeah. people, so he just says what he says, and then if you don't like it, too bad. Scott Hall. Um, Probably the guy I learned more from walking in the door here than anybody. Um, and and most underrated. Man, he was a chico. In he was just I think just an awesome psychologist. Eddie Guerrero. Um, uh, awesome. I uh, miss him. Huge. Um, was uh, just let go and be Eddie and not be caught in his own mind of insecurity. <coughs> you could get a yeah, just like so it would be a, and watching him in the ring was magic. Uh, the little things that he awesome. did that meant so much. Oh. If you know Doug Ford, you, you knew that. Unbelievable. Uh, Goldberg. Goldberg, um, a, a guy that I would credit a lot with in some ways changing that intensity of the business. He had an intensity about him that was just... Um, you know, it's, it's what people, what made people just go, oh my God, look at that. Right? Yeah, just that explosive intensity that you just, and I think he kind of started to cross that line of like, oh, like outside athlete kind of thing. That's cool, as opposed to just being a, a tough guy or something. Brock Lesnar. Freak. 
Yeah. And, um, yeah. And you know, leave it at that. And I'm, that's in a positive regard. Oh my yeah, it's, it's, it's as positive as I can. Yeah. I've never, I've just never experienced anything like it. <laughs> he's white hot right now. Yeah. And, uh, he's right where he needs to be. Paul Heyman. Yeah. Dad, um, in in there's a fine line between crazy and genius. He he rides that line like a like a razor blade. Dude, you put him on, just let him talk. I'm yeah. never gonna change the channel. Absolutely. Uh, Owen Hart. Um, one of the one of the nicest guys I knew, and one of the funniest guys I knew. Um, you know, again, a tragic situation. But the, Owen was one of those guys to me that was so good in the ring that he could purposely tell you like I'm gonna go stick the joint out and then go up there and have the worst match you have ever seen in your life. <laughs> and then that was really a lot. Oh my god. It was, it was, it was great else. when you could watch it, but when he was doing it with you, oh when you did that with me a couple times, I was mad at the horn oh so funny. <laughs> yeah. Bret Hart. I was Bret Hart. <laughs> I don't know you would um, go home or two. You know, maybe sometimes take himself too seriously. Man, I just, that guy, I got so much respect for him. He truly lived. He lived like we were, we were talking about, you know, you've got to believe 100%. And he did. Best there is, was, ever will be. Absolutely. And he believed that and he lived it. And, uh, and in the ring, unbelievable. I know you got one word for this. Undertaker. Respect. Kane. Um, underrated and just, he, if I had to say one word, he's the constant. I was going to say solid. I yeah. mean, just the constant. Yeah, man. He just here, always great, always, you know, just just, just constant, solid. Pat Patterson. Wow. Um, genius. Uh, genius for the business. I, know, I, I respect Pat so much. Um, man, like one of the guys that when I got in here and there was a lot of, you know, between the Chiefs and the Gorilla, I mean, the Chiefs and the and the George Seals and the and all these guys, Pat was the guy that just like every time he opened his mouth, I was like, oh my God, it was like the smartest thing ever. Yeah, Michael Hayes, um, so underrated for his contributions to the business, just across the board. Man, I'm telling you, I was down there in Denton, Texas, playing football at North Texas State University when the Freebirds came in time, town to beat up the Von Erics. I paid my money to go see those guys, and I don't know, man, that, that's Hall of Fame right there. I mean, as me, Dallas, like, I'm just throwing something out there. That's I paid my money to see that guy, and you know I'm a hardcore pro wrestler. Look for point, I don't want to go on. Pro wrestling sports entertainment, because there's a big disconnect with you and Vince. I'm a pro wrestler. I was. Where are you? Well, here's the difference. I, I understand the, the, the distinction between the two, and I also understand the distinction of 